It played out in front of thousands of PQ supporters, but few really knew what was happening at the time, nor that when it was all over, one man was dead, another wounded. The moment Pauline Marois was whisked off the stage during her victory speech last night to the moment the police arrested a suspected shooter was less than a quarter hour. To some, it might have felt like a lifetime. Here's Joanna Remiliotis with six critical minutes. The mood at the metropolis was growing more jubilant, more festive by the minute. A Parti Québécois victory had been declared. Hundreds of party faithful crammed into the concert hall in downtown Montreal were celebrating and waiting for Pauline Marois, Quebec's premier-elect, to take the stage. It took Marois several moments to wade through the adoring crowd, to wait for a break in the applause. Then the PQ leader began what was supposed to be a historic speech as Quebec's first woman premier. It was 11.42 p.m. Alors, en tout premier lieu, en tout premier lieu, permettez-moi de remercier chaleureusement Marois thanked her supporters and repeated her party's promises. At the point where she was beginning the sovereignist portion of her speech, the first sign of trouble appeared. It was 11.58 p.m., the start of a critical six-minute window. Marois had been speaking for about 15 minutes when suddenly two police officers whisked her off the stage. Marois was taken off guard. So was CBC's election uh, team covering the event. Wow, I'm um, not sh quite sure what just happened there. You could see her SQ uh, officer detail uh, rushing her off the podium. Uh, I don't know if Lynn Robson, do, Lynn, if you're on the line, can you tell us what, what just happened there? Uh, I'm sorry, I saw the same thing you did. Everything looked fine, and then all of a sudden, uh, the man in the, with the uh, headphone uh, walked on stage and whisked her off. Uh, we haven't had any word here, and nobody around here seems to have any clue. Madame Marois was simply concluding, it seemed, uh, the end of her victory speech. Uh, there had been no disruption in the room. Ah, here comes somebody who I think is going to tell us exactly what's going on, Andrew. Okay, let's listen. There was a slight glitch. Uh, we were told that uh, Somebody uh, let off with a, uh, a you know, a blank. And uh, listen, everything is under control. There was no one injured, but uh, you will understand that uh, we thought it would be better to protect our premier. But it was more than a blank and more than a glitch. Seconds before Marois was taken off the stage, a man wearing a house coat and a balaclava stood at the back entrance, wielding an assault rifle and another firearm. He was just six meters away from the stage. Police say the suspect walked down this road and entered the building through the back door. Minutes later, shots were fired. The gunman didn't make it past the entrance. No one in the crowd seemed to know what was happening. On Twitter, people described the scene and the sounds and smells that seemed to come out of nowhere. Some heard shots. Were you afraid? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I was pretty afraid and uh, I just tried to get out. <laughs> so you heard gunshots? Yeah. How many shots did you hear? Uh, two. Two? Yeah. And then what? I just get out. I, I got out. Where did you hear the gunshots coming from? Uh, well, I was inside the, metrop the, the metropolis. And then, uh, well, I heard it from inside. It was inside? Yeah. Did you see anyone holding a gun? No. There was too many people. It was, it was really crowded. So I just got out and, yeah, that's it. The noise, the applause was deafening at times. Many didn't actually hear the gunfire or know two people had been shot. In what was a surreal scene, all that was clear inside was the swift move to stave off panic. It was midnight. Just two minutes after Marois was hustled off the podium, the new premier insisted on going back on stage with the MC of the event, appearing unfazed and determined to keep the crowd calm too. Écoutez, tout est sous contrôle, mais on vous demande de sortir. Marois said only that an unfortunate incident had occurred and asked people to evacuate, then thank them once again for coming. 
Un merci d'être là avec moi ce soir. Merci. At this point, Marois did not know two men had been shot. But a minute later, it was clear police were giving her an update. Clear, too, that the advice was to take a few minutes before exiting. So Marois got back on the stage again and asked the crowd to hold on for a couple of minutes, that the incident was under control. Attendez-nous quelques minutes, on croit qu'on a contrôlé l'incident. But despite the brave faces inside, the incident was not under control. After opening fire, the gunman had used an accelerant to set the back door of the concert hall on fire. CBC cameraman Martin Bouffard was the only one to capture these images. He had ducked out of the event just moments before to set up a position outside. And we're not sure yet, so I just tried to uh, look in the back to see where she will leave. And uh, so I did, I did my, um, my, shirt, my, my search uh, in the back. And then I came back to, uh, to my truck to grab the cam, and at this moment I heard a big bang. So I saw some young guys just leaving very, very fast, running outside. So I grabbed my cam, go in the back, and I saw all the flames. The back exit was just in fire, so no place to exit. And so I heard the SQ police just telling that they will have to find another exit for Pauline, and I heard a policeman who said, uh, I just grabbed the guy, he's on the floor there. So I just run and I saw the guy uh, on the floor with two, three policemen. And just beside that guy, there was uh, two guns. What it looked like, an AK-47 and a nine, a black nine millimeters. But you know, I don't know very well the harms, but so I shoot it. And then the fire was everywhere, so I just came back. The police tried to uh, push off, uh, push uh, us a little bit, and so that's what, what's happened. The fire was put out quickly. It was 12.04 a.m., just six minutes after Marois had been whisked off the stage, that police apprehended 61-year-old Richard Henry Bain, a businessman from Mont Tremblant, Quebec. As he was led away, he was heard yelling in French, the English have woken up. It was a chilling footnote, but even with the arrest, police were not certain the scene or the PQ leader was safe. It was 1.30 a.m. when officers swooped into the nearby Sheraton Hotel where Marois was staying. It was 1.57 a.m. when police made a grim update. One of the shooting victims, a 40-year-old technician, had died. Suspect will be questioned. We'll see what goes exactly. Uh, what was the motive? Uh, why was he here exactly? We want to rule out that he was just by himself. But this is not a movie. This is not a TV series. we got to conduct a complete investigation. So an investigation that continued well into the night. It's a little after 2 a.m., just about two hours after the shooting occurred. Police are still out here in full force, and some officers are scouring nearby buildings looking for potential accomplices. And looking for other explosives, too. This woman was forced to leave her apartment nearby. I heard two shots, she says. Because the cops said there could be danger, danger of bombs, possibly, or whatever else, we had to leave. Police refused to speculate about a motive or whether this was an assassination attempt against Marois. Still so many questions they say need to be answered. All that is clear now, it took as little as six minutes to turn a historic political celebration into a tragic crime scene. Ioana Rumeliotis, CBC News, Montreal.